I'm Katie Ullman reporting for Katie Chats here at Smithy TV in downtown Toronto. for Katie Chats here with Ira Naiman, the proprietor of the Alternate Reality News Service. Tell me exactly what this news service is and what inspires you to begin it. Uh, well, they send reporters into other universes and then they come back and report on what they find there. Um, I am, my background is in political satire and I was looking for uh, a way of uh, a new way of, of writing about the subjects that I tend to write about. Um, and I thought, okay, uh, alternate universes, that's pretty cool. Fake news is a big thing these days, right, with, with The Daily Show and places like that. Um, so I combined the fake news concept with uh, the science fiction concept of the alternate realities, and that's what came up. Tell me a little bit about the contest you have going with this Lovely book right here. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, it's, the, it's actually the fifth collection of alternate reality news service articles. It's called the Alternate Reality News Services Guide to Love, Sex, and Robots. Uh, it's a collection of uh, humorous science fiction um, advice columns. There are two, uh, Ask Amritsar, which is about uh, love and romance and technology, uh, and Ask the Tech Answer Guy, which is about technology and anything other than love and romance, because the tech answer guy doesn't do that stuff. Um, and what I always thought was that it would be a lot of fun for my uh, readers to um, submit questions like a real advice column, right? Um, and to kind of give them a little more incentive, uh, I am giving away uh, free copies of the book, five free copies to the five best questions I get by the end of summer, by September 1st. Um, what I suggest people do, I, I suggest that people read a couple to get a sense of kind of what I do, because it's, it's a little strange even for advice columns, which can be really strange on their own too. Um, what they can do is they can go to my website, Les Page Au Fall, and um, there are examples, lots of examples there of previously written columns, so they can read a few, get a sense of what I do, and hopefully uh, be inspired to submit their own questions. And you recently had the launch of Welcome to the Multiverse, Sorry for the Inconvenience, in England in March. What was the best part about that experience? Uh, well, it, it was a bit of a it was a bit of a haul. I went to England for the launch at uh, a science fiction convention there called EasterCon, um, which was awesome. I had lots of really good um, uh, responses from English readers. I'd been told by a number of people that my humor is very British, um, and I don't know if this proves that, but it certainly did uh, did give evidence to that. Um, and then, uh, so I came back on a Thursday, and then on the Friday, I had the Canadian launch at Ad Astra Science Fiction Convention here in Toronto. Um, and I had uh, a cake in the with the cover of the book on it, and you'll see there are two characters on the cover. The person who made the cake actually made little figures of the two characters on the cover who kind of sat on the front of the cake. That was awesome, too. Um, but yeah, England. Um, I'd always wanted to go to England. Since I was a kid, I've wanted to, to see London in particular, right? Because so many British movies are set there, and it's like I almost, feel, almost felt like I had known the place, even though I'd never been there. Um, and it was as awesome as I thought it was. Um, we, uh, the, the con was in uh, a place called Bradford, a city called Bradford, and um, I had actually, uh, the, the publisher, Peter uh, Buck uh, of Elswen Press, had uh, offered to give me a lift from there to his home in Kent, which is very close to London. Um, and we were just driving uh, through uh, the British countryside, and it's, at one point he, he goes to me, do you see that, that stand of trees over there? And I'm like, yeah, they're trees. Um, that's Sherwood Forest. I'm like, oh man, really? I know so many things that have been set in that place, right? Um, and of course, I'm Toronto born and raised, right? So I have no sense of history, but, but England is just full of it, no matter where you turn, especially in London. London was just the most amazing city to walk around in, because you know, wherever you turn around, there's something famous and old, right? And there's so much history there. Um, it was just, it was awesome. And tell me a little bit about this book we have here, The Street Finds Its Own Uses for Mutant Technologies. 
Uh, that's the fourth collection of alternate reality news service stories. Um, one of the things I'm, I'm actually most proud of with that book is that the first chapter um, contains a series of stories that I wrote about this country that is an idiotocracy. It's ruled by the stupidest people, right? And what I really wanted to get at with that was that um, Western governments these days seem to be running away from basing their decisions on rational thought, right? The, the way that they kind of shut out scientists from things like the uh, environmental debates and stuff like that. Um, and I really wanted to get at um, how this affects government decisions on a day-to-day -day basis. So in that chapter, there are articles about um, engineers who build bridges out of spaghetti because their faith tells them that spaghetti is a good enough uh, medium, that it'll be strong enough to hold cars. And of course, it collapses within two seconds. Um, there is three articles on the war on donuts, um, which is, of course, the war on drugs, but displaced to the Canadian border, where um, you know uh, it's the Canadians who are, who, are, who are sneaking donuts into a health-conscious America, right? Um, things like that. And as a whole, um, you know, each of the individual parts are in themselves pretty funny, but as a whole, it's a real indictment of um, what's going on with government these days and, and the way that, you know, uh, government decisions are based more on uh, keeping the populace in fear than they are of actually making rational decisions about issues. And I'm very proud of, of, of that chapter. And of course, it's comedy, it's funny, right? Because uh, whenever I start off on, on tangents like that, or whenever I start off on rants like that, I guess, um, you know, um, I'm afraid I'm going to give the impression that I'm, I'm this, you know, angry, ranty kind of guy, and, uh, and I'm a humorist. I write things that hopefully the main thing is that you'll laugh at them. If you come away with them with, you know, things to think about, so much the better. What advice would you give to an aspiring writer? You know what? Self-publishing is so easy now. Um, it's awesome for, for writers just coming up. The, the publishing industry, the mainstream publishing industry, actually last week two of the big six publishers, Penguin and uh, Random House, merged. So now there are only five major publishers, right? And if you try that route, and by all means try you know, to get a major publisher if you can, more power to you. Um, but that route is increasingly closed off to writers. Um, but self-publishing has opened up a whole different route to get your material out there. Um, with uh, Create, Sma Create Space, I, I wanted to mix Create Space and Smash Words, Create Smash. Yeah. Mm. Um, sometimes the brain goes a little faster than the mouth, right? Uh, create space on the print side and smash words on the ebook side. Um, they both cost next to nothing to do, and you can get really professional looking copies of your books out. Um, the two alternate reality news service books were um, uh, self published. Um, the novel published by Elsewhen Press, which is a small uh, science fiction publisher. But um, yeah, it's so easy. But if you're going to go the self-publishing route, you have to understand that you aren't going to have a big publicity machine behind you, right? So you have to um, do your own publicity. You have to do things like this. Uh, you have to get on social networks on the internet. You have to be going to cons or, or you know, just whatever promotional opportunities uh, present themselves to you. You really have to do that. And that's a hard thing for a lot of writers, right? I mean, we spend most of our times inside our own heads thinking about stuff. And when we're not thinking about stuff, we're sitting behind our computers and typing stuff and really not a lot of interaction with the public, right? Uh, what I say is that um, I'm a recovering shy person. <laughs> Right? When I first started going to cons maybe three years ago uh, to promote my books, I was like, people! <laughs> um, and, you know, you could tell, right? Um, I'm a lot smoother in just talking about my stuff now than I ever used to be, right? So one of the things that I can tell, you know, aspiring authors is if it doesn't come naturally to you, it does get easier the more you do it, right? But you just, you have to be pushing yourself out there. 
And where's the best place to find out more information on you and all the exciting work that you're up to online? Well, uh, I mentioned before I have a website, Les Pages au Fall. Um, it's updated weekly with new articles and, and cartoons because I do that as well. Um, for both uh, new material and to uh, get into some older material, um, that's probably the best place. I also have links to reviews of the books and other interviews that I do and things like that. Um, I would suggest that um, for the novel, people go to the Elsewhen Press uh, website, as well as my book. They have a lot of other really awesome books, and uh, if you're into science fiction, uh, it really is a good little um, publisher. When I, <laughs> when I first approached them about a year ago to publish this book, um, it was just, it was a, a random fluke. I had, I had seen a Twitter post about them and I thought, okay, people had been telling me about the British thing, so I thought maybe I'd have more luck with a British publisher and I did. What I didn't realize at the time when I submitted my manuscript was that they were only a year old at that point. Wow. Um, and so they're now about two and a half years old and they already have a dozen titles and uh, they're all really, or at least the ones that I've read so far, I've read three or four of them, are really awesome. Well, thank you so much. Congratulations on all of your success. It was lovely seeing you again and best of luck with your upcoming projects. Well, thank you kindly. Thank you. I'm Katie Allman reporting for Katie Chats in downtown Toronto. Mm -hmm.